<laughs> this is going to change everything. Welcome back to the wet coast and spring is here and the weather is starting to get nicer and that means I want to turn a little bit of my attention to my little Coleman BT200X mini bike. So in a previous video you might have seen I played around with it in the snow. The link is either up here in a corner depending if you're on that kind of a device. If not it's definitely in the comments if you want to check it out. And it really sucked. Not necessarily because of the snow but because of something else. I've also noticed when I've had this little bike up in the mountains when I'm going up some fairly steep hills if I come to a stop I am screwed. I can't get the bike moving again and there's a real good reason for that and it's right behind this black case here. Let me open it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. That thing right there is a centrifugal clutch. It's what allows us to ride these little mini bikes without an actual transmission. Yeah, okay, I guess you could technically call this a transmission. It's single speed and that allows you to come to a stop and the engine can continue to idle without a clutch because that acts as the actual clutch. So with the engine spinning, there's little weights inside that fly out. They engage this drum right here and allow the power to get through the little dog shaft here to the back wheels and zoom, off you go. The problem with this is if you need a lot of torque right away, like if you're stopped on a hill like I was or if you're bombing around in the snow like I was, the engine can't get up enough speed to hit where it's got the highest amount of torque, which I think is probably around 4,500 RPM. Not that this engine in a stock format goes that high. It just can't build enough power to overcome the resistance of moving the bike up a hill or through the snow and letting the clutch get to a point where it can actually move the bike forward. All that ends up happening is the friction pads in the clutch drag against the drum, the engine can't get up to speed, and you're stuck. So I've got a plan to fix this, and I'll show you what that is. And what's in this box is my secret weapon to get some decent performance out of that little 196cc engine. This is a torque converter or a constant velocity transmission or uh, it used to be called a TAV2, TAV2, Comet. It was probably something from the 60s or 70s. They were the high quality ones. This is a made in China one. It'll probably work. We'll figure it out. I'll show you what's inside the box. Another guard cover to protect all the moving parts. Hefty drive bell. The mounting plate. This looks to be like the driven pulley. And the driving pulley with the clutch. Oh, hello. You come to help, have you? Typical cat, right? So this is the pulley and the centrifugal clutch that goes on uh, the engine itself. It's a three-quarter inch shaft. This is the backing plate that mounts it all together. This is the driven pulley. This is the part that makes the tire turn around. So you can see the sprocket in there. That connects to the back wheel, so I have to make sure everything's aligned properly. Some mounting hardware, the drive belt, and the case to keep your fingers out of there when everything's moving. This is the secret sauce to making it work, and the reason for that is, and for some weird reason, the output shaft on these engines are 16 millimeter. I think they're 16 millimeter. Don't quote me, but they're not three quarter inch, which is pretty much every other kinds of these engines you can get. So this is an adapter that will increase the diameter of the shaft on this engine to three quarter inch using the key that comes with it. This is only one stage in the evolution of things that I'm gonna to do to this mini bike. I will be replacing this engine with a slightly larger 212 cc one. It is bone stock except for the exhaust, which I put on in another video. Again, the link will either be in the top corner of your screen or it will definitely be in the description. Otherwise, it is absolutely bone stock. I haven't even removed the governor in this engine to get it to rev faster. I probably won't do that, but I will do it to the 212cc one that I'm going to do later. Now, what I need to do... Just take her for her rip. I've got a GPS speedometer on my phone. Let's see what she'll do with no modification.
Yeah, so that was disappointing. The best I got out of her going down a slight downhill was 19 miles an hour or 30 kilometers an hour. <sighs> Thought I'd go faster than that. Well, it is in stock form, so let's go do something about this. All right, I've got my mini bike all strapped up on my table. It's nice and secure. I'll start taking off the old centrifugal clutch and the chain and sprockets and stuff. Should be pretty quick. I think that's a 22 or 28, 24 fits. Just to knock this off. So one thing that I think is a little disappointing about this engine is this seal is already starting to leak. You can see a lot of dust build up here from the weeping oil. And this engine only has three hours on it. I installed this meter the couple days after I got this bike. Three hours, leaking crankshaft seal. Hmm. I'll need to figure out what to do about that. Or maybe not. I don't think I'm keeping this engine. So let's see what I gotta do to adapt this thing to that thing. Okay. <laughs> right away. This has to go. This is just a cross support that the chain guard anchors to. There's nothing else attached to this. I'm gonna cut it off. It also looks like this is going to hit the frame because on the back of this is the shaft and the bearings for the pulley and that would hit the engine. So I'm going to have to clock it a little bit but that also means I'm going to have to raise the engine I have plenty of room up there. I can raise the engine like five inches if I need to. Won't be a problem. But that's what I'll have to do next. So I'll pull the engine. Then I'll take the frame outside. I'll cut these off. And that should give me plenty of room to get this installed. As far as alignment, I think it's going to be pretty close. So this is definitely not a direct replacement, a plug and play kind of kit. Just stuff that you're gonna have to do to your mini bike if you want to use one of these. Uh, it's gonna void your warranty. Keep that in mind. If you do go this route, this is gonna void your warranty. All right, I'm gonna take the engine out. First, I'm gonna disconnect the throttle cable or the throttle control. This will be quick and easy because I already just recently replaced the carburetor on my gasoline powered air compressor. And if you want to see that video, I'll put a link down in the description, as well as maybe one up in the corner there, depending on, as always, what device you're watching this on. Probably didn't need to do that, but it makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing here. It's gonna be this cable one screw here and that screw there that holds it oh, on the front of the engine is the kill switch this will disconnect and i have to disconnect that nut there with the ground and that will come right off kill switch wires are disconnected and the only thing to do now is disconnect the connector for the headlight 
that just pops out, disconnected. And now the only thing left to do is undo those four bolts and that engine will just lift right out. Bolts are undone. As easy as that. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, now I'll take the bike outside. I'm gonna remove this first. I'm gonna take the bike outside. I'm just gonna grind the welds off here. I may use this a little later. I haven't decided yet. And then I'm gonna build a spacer of about two inches just using some rectangular tubing that I've got kicking around. That'll get, should get me enough height where I can clock that transmission mounting plate and give me some room here. So I'm gonna go do that now. So before I get the engine back into the bike and get the bike back up on top of the table here, I just want to make sure that I'm going to have enough room. I'm going to test fit the backing plate with the driven pulley on it onto the engine and then probably bolt it together because once this is together, I don't need to really mess with it anymore. So you can see there's lots of different holes for probably different engine manufacturers. As high as I can go is right about here before it bumps into the engine. And there's those four holes that seem to be where I'm going to mount them. So like here, 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 and here. So I'm just going to put those in now and just loosely tighten them up. So you can see that it looks like I only need to raise the engine up about the thickness of a two by four, which is one and three quarter inches. Let's see what I've got as far as metal stock, what will be around there or slightly higher. So I don't have to raise the en engine up four inches if I don't need to. I'm gonna tighten these down. After I've got this all worked out and on the scooter and test driven, I'll do another disassembly and I'll put blue Loctite on this stuff just to stop those bolts from backing out. I don't think they will. Now there is one thing I'd read about this particular kit with this particular high sun engine and the 16 millimeter shaft is that they provide you with this long bolt, which is supposed to hold this assembly onto the, the snout of the crankshaft. It's the wrong thread. The bolt's too thick. This is the one that held the original centrifugal uh, clutch to the shaft. So what I'll need to do is go to the hardware store and get the smaller diameter bolt and the length that I need, but that's no big deal. I have to go get some bolts for mounting the engine with the spacer anyways. But for now, I'll just continue with the assembly, see if I can get the shaft adapter on and get the centrifugal clutch and the pulley belts or the pulley belt on now. So this shaft adapter is about a half inch longer than the shaft. So I'm gonna have to cut that to the right length. And we'll go do that now. So line the new key in the slot cut into the crankshaft. And this will just tap right on. Well, that already has a key in it. This key is not needed. That. That's too snug. And that will go on the outside. But, I have a problem. With this adapter on the 16 millimeter shaft, again, I'm assuming 16 millimeter, I have not measured it. It's a bit too big. It's expanded a bit too far for this pulley to fit on. I'm gonna take a couple thous off of this. I'm gonna start the engine, use the turning shaft and a file, maybe some sandpaper, and keep checking it against the inside diameter of this to make sure I don't take too much off. Still more. I'm gonna use some sandpaper. Oh yeah. Much better. Don't take too much off. Clean out all the filings before you put it all together because those might cause you problems later, but that is so much better. Uh, take it back, start putting it all back together. So this isn't the best solution because I'm banging on the crankshaft, which is connected to stuff inside like the piston and 
there's other thrust surfaces inside on the other side of the case so I don't want to be wailing on it with a hammer I just want to tap it lightly and gently Right now, it would be very entertaining because now I can't get a nut behind there if I do want to take this off, so I'd have to find some other way of pulling this off. I'm glad I did snug down the bolts holding the vacuum plate on the motor because I can't get to them anymore. Well, that's future Chris's problem. This is the bushing that goes on next. It's what allows the belt to sit on while the engine's idling, prevents it from rubbing. And we'll get that now. Okay, so I've got the engine kind of sitting where I want it. You can see that a one and three quarter inch bit of one by, or two by six definitely gives me the clearance that I need down here. It looks like the holes will align in the, in the mounting plate on the frame of the bike. The chain is just long enough. That's where the link is there. And it looks like it lines up pretty straight. So this is pretty cool. This might work out well. It's the right sprocket, sprocket on the on the transmission itself. Works with the chain that came with the, the mini bike. Yeah, this is gonna fit pretty good. Time to get to the store and get some bolts. I'm just gonna measure the length that I need from here to here. See if I can find myself some material because I don't actually have any angle iron that is less than three inches, which would make the engine sit way up here, which is, you know, unnecessary I'm gonna go to the store now one hour later so i'm gonna cheat a little bit instead of using some uh rectangular tubing in here i'm just gonna use these hex couplers they're an inch and a half high they're gonna sit like this and the engine will sit on top of that and then the bolts that i picked up from the hydro restore are just gonna go through that this should be a good enough mount for the engine i mean hey we're dealing with six and a half whopping horsepower here once I've got this all sussed out and it works great, I am gonna go ahead and do a proper engine mount. So you can see I've got the engine sitting on the spacers now. It's all bolted down and tightened up and it gives me just enough length and adjustment for the chain. I've got a little bit of adjustment I can do here, move in or out. I gotta put the link back in the chain here, but it lines up pretty sweet. Um, it's pretty, I can twist the engine a little bit more. It's a little bit cocked, but not a big deal. I'll adjust that. I would not recommend using this method to space the engine up to clear the bottom of the transmission because that's janky. This is just for testing. The motor could vibrate, it could twist, it'll get out of alignment with the chain, bad things could happen. So this is just for testing. I'll do a proper mount if it all works out. The chain is all reconnected. I've got the belt on. The engine is tightened down and all I did was put the drum back on the front end of the transmission. The thing I'm going to do now is put the airbox back on, just reconnect the throttle and the kill switch and go for a test drive. Oh, there it is. All connected, ready to go. Only ran into two minor snags so far with this torque converter transmission kit. The first one was not really much of a problem. This is the cover for it. There's no cutout on the back for the chain, so if I try to put it on, it's just gonna bang against the chain there. I'm not gonna cut it out just yet because I'm not convinced this is gonna be its final configuration for this. The other snag I ran into, by raising the engine almost two inches, I couldn't get the airbox cover in there and bolted on properly. Not a big deal as I've got the air filter on. I'm gonna start her up and see how everything runs. Looks good to me. Let's see if she'll ride. It's definitely changed the character of the bike. It's not as fast as it used to be. And I think the problem I'm running into now is the max RPMs of the motor because it's governed. So remember when I said I was not gonna mess with the governor on this engine? I lied. I'm gonna fix that. <sighs> There's always something. So before I go ahead and I take out the governor, 
I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this little screw here. It's a little hard to see, but that screw there is kind of a limit for how far the governor can open the throttle. So I'm going to back that screw as far as I can and see how, how that affects the running of the engine. I want to just get about another 1,000 RPM out of it. I don't want to go too crazy. So, get the screwdriver on there. <coughs> that thing is on. Okay, what the hell? <laughs> I busted the tip of my screwdriver off. Why is that so? Oh, well, I'm an idiot. While the screw is there, I can see right at that point there, the factory has put a little tack weld on it. I guess they don't want anybody messing with that. Well, me and my grinder say otherwise. First, I'm gonna run the bike and you'll see that it doesn't really reach full RPMs and the pulleys don't move. That rear pulley should open up and the back wheel should spin a lot faster. So I'll show you that now. Definitely not running as fast as it should. All right, that's got her loose. I'm gonna bolt this throttle assembly back together and see how it runs once I back that screw right out. Okay, I've got the screw here all freed up and I've got it backed up. So this can have a much larger range of motion. It doesn't seem to go all the way, but that's okay. Let's give it a try and see what it does. Okay, it's running a lot better than it was and the clutches are activating and the speed is increasing on the rear wheel. But I've got a bit of a miss that's happening and I think that's because of the freer flowing exhaust pipe that I put on the bike. Now that the revs are getting higher, I think the carb's leaning out a bit. So I've ordered some new jets for the carb and I'm gonna put those in when they arrive. In the meantime, I've discovered something else. I thought I was being clever by using these to raise the engine up so that the back end of the torque converter cleared the frame. It sucks. Uh, I really should have figured that this was going to happen. I've got one that's gone missing. It had vibrated loose. And I've also noticed that when I'm riding the, the bike during testing, the whole engine is torquing left and right. So that's no good. I'm going to actually make a proper one out of square tubing. I'll do that now and that should probably take care of it. Okay, she's all back together. You can see I've got the one inch square tubing under there. It actually turned out to be the perfect size for it to allow the bottom of the torque converter transmission to clear everything. Look how close it comes right there. But you know, 10,000s clearance is just as good as a full inch. I am gonna take her for a little rip now. I don't think I'm gonna get much more performance out of her until I get the new jet in the carburetor, but what the heck, let's give it a try and see if she'll ride. Well, that went a lot better. I was able to get up over 22, 23 miles an hour at one point. It definitely accelerates a lot faster. I can even get to the point where I'm lifting the wheel up just a little bit. But the engine revs just don't top out at a point where the clutch can really start moving the ratio and get that speed that I'm looking for. I'm kind of thinking that I wouldn't bother getting this torque converter kit if you're gonna keep the stock high sun engine. I didn't like how much length there was left over in the shaft to hold this whole assembly on. There's not a lot of meat on there. And I can see that being a point of failure. You also have to use the skinny little six mil bolt. I think it's maybe, sorry, six mil. Yeah, you have to use the skinny little six mil bolt to hold this on. And I just don't think that's strong enough over time, especially if you're gonna beat your mini bike on a trail. I'm gonna wait until I get the jet installed in the carb, see if I can get some more speed out of it. I'm also gonna remove the governor on this engine, give it one more rip and see how it goes. But honestly, I don't think I could advocate buying a torque converter for these little mini bikes with that 16 millimeter shaft. You can get with these torque converters with the proper diameter hubs on it that'll fit that shaft, but I think they're a lot more expensive and it's just not worth it. 
especially because I'm going to upgrade this engine to a 212cc and see where it takes me from there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit of a long one. I will do a test with the governor removed and the new jetting in another short video. But if you enjoyed the video, why not hit the thumbs up, give me a like, share it around with your friends. It'll help me out a lot. Uh, why not subscribe to the channel? I've got a lot of fun stuff planned for it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.